the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Marine, Deputy Charlie McConnell, Oak, to move the motion. I move the motion, Cahirla. Thank you, Minister. And you have seven and a half minutes, and I believe you're sharing. Yeah, sharing thank with you. Minister of State Hackett. Thanks, thank you very much. And I, I would like to thank the Dáil for giving me the opportunity to outline a number of amendments to the Forestry Act 2014 to increase the planting of native trees. The programme for government outlines our commitment to addressing the urgent need to increase the level of tree planting in Ireland. We acknowledge that our planting targets are ambitious and we need to significantly improve on the rate we issue licences. <coughs> These changes are part of a number of work areas my department is examining to review work processes and examine in more detail the regulatory regime while safeguarding the environment. The proposal today is designed to remove a legislative barrier to small-scale native tree planting. The inclusion of small-scale small native tree planting measures in agriculture and forestry schemes is currently contained by the, or constrained, I should say, by the 0.1 hectare limit imposed by the forest definition in the Forestry Act of 2014. Approval is sought today to amend the Forestry Act 2014 through the Animal Health and Welfare Miscellaneous Provisions Bills to increase the native tree planting areas as part of a scheme by removing the requirement for a forestation licence for, firstly, an area not less than 0.1 hectare and not greater than 1 hectare, or an area of not less than 0.1 hectare that is not greater than 20 metres in width. This will complement existing tree planting measures and aims to re-engage farmers in afforestation and play a part in meeting the ambitious roadmap towards climate neutrality as outlined in the recently published climate uh, action plan. Our afforestation targets are ambitious when compared to recent afforestation rates and will be challenging to meet in the next decade. And clearly, more needs to be done to substantially increase our afforestation over the next decade, including greater integration between the measures in the National Forestry Programme and the Common Agricultural Policy. These measures are not a substitute for the ongoing work to reform the licensing process or for planting afforestation sites which remain a priority for the Department. Instead, they are another part of the solution that will assist in getting areas planted in Irish farms. Woodlands and trees provide a wide range of benefits that include social, environmental and economic values. We have 11 per cent forest cover nationally in addition to the many additional trees found growing in hedgerows, parks and fields. Trees play an important role in climate change mitigation and biodiversity. Creating new nat native woodlands and undisturbed water setbacks can deliver meaningful ecosystem services that protect and enhance water quality and aquatic ecosystems. The creation of these permanent semi-natural landscape features alongside streams, rivers and lakes will protect and enhance water quality and aquatic habitats into the future. I would like to provide Minister of State, Habit, or Minister of State, State Hackett with the opportunity to further comment on why these proposals are important. Thank you, Cahirla. Uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you. Um, thank you for asking, Carla. Um, as Minister of State with responsibility for forestry, I am pleased to have the opportunity to address the Dáil today on the importance of planting trees, and in particular our native trees. The Climate Action Plan 2021 sets an ambitious afforestation target when compared to recent afforestation rates and will be challenging to meet in the next decade. However, the Department is committed to addressing the current barriers which has resulted in low afforestation rate for all plantation sizes, and these measures today are part of the solution. Key to the success of increasing afforestation rates is to build back confidence among landowners of the benefits of forestry and to provide greater integration on Irish farms. Introducing this exemption for afforestation in certain circumstances facilitates the exclusion of clearly defined activities from requiring a, an afforestation licence. These changes will provide opportunities for those engaged in afforestation to increase awareness among farmers that have not considered any tree planting in the past. The design of any initiatives to utilise these measures will have to ensure compliance with all environmental law, such as the EIA, Habitats and Water Framework Directives. This is not a measure that will allow tree planting to take place that is not in accordance with best practice. In advance of the development of a scheme, the Department will be undertaking a strategic environmental assessment and appropriate assessment. Furthermore, through scheme criteria and with advisory structures and approval processes in place, the inclusion of such an exemption can only be undertaken in a legally compliant and sustainable manner. If these, changes are approved by my, if these changes are approved, my department will carry out an SEA which will include mandatory consultations with statutory bodies, the public and interested stakeholders. These changed, changes proposed will have a positive impact on the environment and increase the levels of native tree planting in Ireland. 
The focus on native tree species is to recognise the important environmental role they play in relation to climate change, biodiversity and water quality. The afforestation scheme will remain the main measure for planting native and commercial woodland at scale. Large forests of all species play a significant role in carbon sequestration and it is hoped that if a farmer plants one hectare, they may be encouraged to plant larger, hectare, larger areas in the future through our afforestation scheme. However, I appreciate that some deputies may ask that we need to address the current licensing backlogs and I assure you this remains my priority. My department is committed to addressing the current barriers which have resulted in low afforestation rates in the past. Project Woodland, which has been established, is making good progress. We are examining a number of work streams, which includes a focus on reducing the backlog in licensing. We are examining exist existing regulations and looking at efficiencies in work processes. Once this legislation is enacted, we will carry out stakeholder consultation on the design of any proposed scheme and discuss how we can ensure maximum participation. The public and statutory bodies will also be provided to, to engage in the mandatory public consultation process required for the development, developing an SEA. Furthermore, the SEA will inform the development of the scheme eligibility criteria. In addition, the amended legislation can also facilitate additional tree planting in agri-environmental schemes and measures where tree planting measures were historically capped below 0.1 hectares in size. The role of registered foresters, agricultural consultants and advisors will be important when the scheme is being developed and we will engage with them over the coming months. Streamlining the process for native tree planting will involve the landowner or their agent assessing and submitting applications that meet the eligibility criteria, which will be subject to validation checks to ensure compliance. Once my department confirm compliance with eligibility criteria, they will issue approval to undertake tree planting works. Following completion of the approved works, the landowner submits an application for grant aid. Um, this, this, this piece of legislation um, is um, in line with programme for government commitments in, in relation to planting um, areas of, of hectares of, tree, of one hectare uh, of trees um, and it, it also enables the further planting of native trees. So I would really encourage all deputies to support this amendment. It is one part of the solution to increase tree planting. Project Woodland is addressing a number of other areas of improvements which contributing to increasing our afforestation levels now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister. And now we have uh, Sinn Féin and we have Deputy Matt Carty. And Deputy, you have seven and a half minutes. Karamayagat Kairlach, um, and welcome to the Ministers. Um, I welcome any proposals that um, are aimed at increasing native planting and encouraging um, smaller levels of afforestation among those who may not be willing to or able um, in the current text to take a leap towards um, greater um, greater levels of um, planting. But I have to say the manner in which this um, proposal has been brought forward um, so late in the day um, as an amendment to a piece of legislation that is banning for farming um, to me is a matter of great concern and it's very syst um, symptomatic of the whole manner in which um, forestry policy is dealt with um, in this state. We received this proposal on Friday. We received a briefing which I welcome from Okay, um, um, thank you. The manner in which the legislation has been brought forward so late in the, in the day um, does raise very serious concern and it's not good legislative practice and not the type of approach that Sinn Féin believe is conductive to the development of good legislation. As I say, we received the draft um, on Friday. We got a, a welcome briefing from officials today. That's members of the Oireachtas Agriculture Committee. Um, and we're here discussing in the Dáil to deal with um, committee stage um, later on. One forester is quoted as given the assessment, and this is a quote. This is another hospital passed from the forest service of the department um, to the forest industry in a decade-long litany of hospital passes, which has left this once great indigenous rural-based industry in tatters, end um, quote. Um, and I have to say, that rings true when we read the briefing note which has been circulated um, with this motion. It makes reference to the Climate Action Plan aiming for an afforestation of 8,000 hectares per year annually until 2030. 
as, amb as ambish ambitious when compared to the recent afforestation rate. Well, firstly, I think it's important to acknowledge that the Climate Action Plan doesn't actually outline a target of 8,000 hectares of afforestation at all. It doesn't make any reference to any target. And in the annex to the plan published yesterday, again, that target is not referenced. But the 8,000 um, hectares per year being described as incredibly ambitious, it might be ambitious when compared to the absolute catastrophe um, that we're currently dealing with, but it is nowhere near the level of ambition that we would, um, uh, that we would want. And you know, when we compare to some of our neighbours, um, I think we can safely say that it's not ambition, ambitious at all. Two years on from their McKinnon report, Scotland had reached their pre-crisis um, level of afforestation. Two years on from our McKinnon report, almost to the day, and this um, state's afforestation rates haven't doubled, they've halved. Um, ten years on from McKinnon, Scotland is targeting 15,000 hectares, almost pre-double and um, pre collapse level. And ten years on um, from our report, we're going to be targeting what was only planted prior to afforestation. And rather than actually put in place the mechanisms and the measures that will actually see an ambitious afforestation programme and targets met, we're actually tinkering at the edges to try and bring in a whole pile of smaller um, holdings to try and take the bad luck off what is, can only be described as a record of, um, of fa failure. Again, the briefing note that was provided on this amendment goes to reference Project Woodland examining a number of work streams. And here, to me, lies the crux of the issue. The McKinnon report did not call for a body to be established to examine the findings of an implementation report based on the initial report. It called for actions to be taken. And time and time again, we've seen the can being kicked down the report, one report being followed by an, another. Um, and some of these streams that have been described it won't report until mid next year at the earliest. And by the time actions are actually taken, the government will have taken at least three years to implement a report that's implementation was supposed to be measured in, in, in months. So supports for native broadleaf and leaf planting are absolutely to be welcomed. But if this is the big idea, then it really does amount to a hospital pass and will have little meaning with regard to much of the forestry sector. The current biggest obstacle to afforestation in this um, state is the licensing backlog within the forestry unit with a current target of 100 licenses per week. What um, the department are effectively doing is surrendering to the fact that we have no intention of clearing that backlog by the end of next, next year. So the annex to your climate action plan does reference increasing output of forestry licenses to meet demand by quarter four 2020. So I think it would be important in the closing remarks if the minister would outline what the target output per week is for next year. Do we intend to meet the target in the spring legislative agenda? We'll see in a few weeks' time. Will we see the department beginning work on legislation to provide applicants for forestry licences a statutory period in which they can expect a decision? Because if the licence is to be cleared by 2022, there is no longer any excuse why such a measure would not be provided, and there's no reason why the department would not begin on, um, on preparing such legislation um, today. Um, I have to say, in respect of all of this, as I mentioned at the outset, this is far too um, symptomatic. Last year, we had emergency um, legislation in respect of the appeals process. This House, all parties, um, and the Oireachtas Committee waived pre-legislative scrutiny. And this is too familiar um, that we're now dealing with an amendment to a piece of legislation that has no relation to forestry um, at all. I hope you'll acknowledge in your closing remarks that this isn't the best way of doing business. And there's too much, in my view, um, um, latitude being provided to you that you haven't earned in terms of the trust of this House. So what I would ask you also, um, in respect of the schemes, that we don't wake up on a Wednesday morning to read about the schemes in the Irish Farmers Journal and then receive um, phone calls from constituents as to how this actually meets. That's the 
playbook that your department does all the time. It leaks selectively um, in respect of the schemes, but it doesn't engage with members of this House unless and until it's absolutely essential that you want to bring forward um, legislation within a short um, time frame, and then you ask for our support, um, and you get our support in order to allow those measures to go forward. We need a partnership approach. We need the forestry sector to be central to that. We need environmental groups and communities to be part of all the dialogues that take place. We need to see an increased level of tree planting across this state, and we need to see an increased level of native broadleaf um, tree planting across this state. And any measures to deliver that end are absolutely welcome. But I think it's time to leave the disingenuous um, and, um, and play-acting um, measures to one side and actually get real about this. I hope this is the last time that we see this type of stunt being pulled. We don't need any last-minute measures. We need to have a long-term strategic plan that actually Thank delivers you. for our forestation. Thank you. Now we have uh, Labour Party in seven and a half minutes. Ivana Backage. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Garamagat, last can Corla, and uh, uh, first to say that uh, for, speaking for Labour on this uh, on, on this motion from government, I would say this: that as a party that is very serious about taking measures to tackle the climate crisis, that is serious about. Uh, ensuring that we meet our ambitious but necessary targets on climate. Of course, we welcome any proposals to increase tree planting and in, uh, to increase afforestation, and in particular to increase uh, our native tree planting and, uh, and to increase our woodland cover. Um, and we see certainly the, that increase in forest cover is essential, as an essential component of our actions to meet those climate targets. And that's particularly so when we know that Ireland's forest cover is among the lowest of any country in the European Union. 11%, I understand, compared to the European average of over one third. Sadly, just under 2% of that in Ireland is native woodland, of which only tiny fragments are original ancient forests, approximately 20,000 hectares. And we know that original ancient forests, of course, covered 80% of this island just after the last ice age. So it's in that context that we're uh, willing to support this. But I would say, um, uh, both Minister uh, McAnalog and Minister Hackett, that we do have concerns about the process. And I think, again, it's unfortunate that this is coming to us uh, at such um, a late stage and in relation to a completely different piece of legislation. It's not good legislative practice, uh, particularly in the last sitting week before Christmas, to see uh, uh, to see a, a motion come in, in in this way and to see so little consultation in advance. And I know that many of us will have received and been uh, alerted to the concerns raised by CIFA, the Social, Economic and Environmental and Forestry Association, about the process by which this is, um, this is being introduced. So I think those are very, there are valid concerns around process. But I do agree that we need to take actions that are, uh, that are urgent to ensure that we meet targets, and in particular on afforestation. And I did welcome today's publication of the detailed annex to the Climate Action Plan. It's something which I had sought in this House on a number of occasions over recent months, and in particular since the publication of the Climate Action Plan itself. And I think we'd all be very conscious, and even those in government would acknowledge, that the Climate Action Plan was big on aspirations, but lacked the detailed, the detailed timelines, in particular, on delivery of necessary actions. And it, lacks that, it lacked that level of detail that could only be supplied in the more detailed annex. So it is welcome to see that produced today. I had suspicions Minister, when I raised this in the House last week with, uh, with you, Minister Hackett, I had suspicions it mightn't be published until after the doll had risen. Instead, it's been published on the second last day of the doll term. So that's not ideal. Uh, and we aren't going to therefore have the opportunity to debate that annex um, in, in full before the House rises. And that's unfortunate. Uh, but even on a preliminary look at the annex and at the timelines provided, there are some disappointments in terms of, for example, delays in bringing in regulation of e-scooters and e-bikes. So, you know, some very welcome matters on the transport side in terms of increasing cycling infrastructure and active travel and public transport. But we, we're seeing a lot of delays, a lot of lagging behind, in, uh, in, in, and, and certainly not the necessary sense of urgency that I think we had hoped for in, in this annex. So I do hope we'll have a fuller opportunity to debate the annex, the afforestation targets, and the other targets set out in the annex and the timelines on those. I hope we'll have a chance to debate that early in the new year. And I'm just putting that down on the record today that I'll certainly be looking for that debate through the business committee early in the new year. Um, in, in this motion, I think we also are, all have, other, have concerns about the licensing backlog, and indeed I raised it in the House with you last week on the 9th of December. 
um, in raising a question about the number of afforestation licences issued, uh, and, um, and uh, indeed we then had an engagement and a debate on that. And there were many other colleagues uh, on both sides of the House, I think, who shared concern about that backlog and who shared concern again about the delays in delivery of, of ambitious projects like Project Woodland, uh, welcome though that is. So I think, Minister, you acknowledged yourself um, last week that what has been lacking to date in the forestry sector is a coordinated and joined up afforestation policy fitting within and clearly uh, helping to deliver on the necessary climate action targets and fitting within the climate action plan overall. Uh, and you know, in that context, I suppose just to conclude by saying that I think we should all be concerned not only about low levels of native woodland cover, which I've already mentioned, but also about uh, the fact that we continue to cut down more trees than we're planting, uh, that for every acre of forestry we plant, we're cutting approximately 6.7 acres, and that that needs to change if we were to meet those ambitious but necessary targets. So I, I raise these concerns and these reservations, uh, but in the context of, um, of supporting the, the motion. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, now we have uh, Social Democrats, Deputy Holly Kearns, and you have seven and a half minutes, Deputy. Thank you, Kahir, look, and um, I won't be using all of my time, so I'll be giving the rest of it to Deputy Jackie Cahill, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, in many ways, I welcome this bill and any change that will help improve animal welfare and afforestation. Um, regarding the phasing out of fur farming, it's fair to say that this is a situation of the law catching up with societal changes. The majority of people are deeply uncomfortable with the idea that an animal would be raised for the purpose of using their fur or skin. While there was a time when this was acceptable and fur clothing was sought after, we have moved on. As a country of animal lovers, it is overdue that we phase out this practice. This bill provides a mechanism to compensate those whose livelihoods depend on fur farming. It is a fair approach that acknowledges the impact of the legislation. This represents the type of arrangements we need to help farmers and others move from one practice to another. The amendments to the Forestry Act are a sensible and overdue change. This will allow the small-scale planting of native trees as part of agriculture and forestry schemes. This is something I've advocated for to encourage farmers and landowners to increase our afforestation of native broadleaf varieties. Sections of forestry on all farms will not only help increase our overall afforestation goals, but will foster greater biodiversity and facilitate wildlife corridors. Um, it's something I've mentioned before in this house, but I think it's important to mention it again. There is a kind of aversion to the planting of trees in Ireland on farms, and um, it's something that we did uh, on our farm about 15 years ago when it became um, unviable in terms of dairy because of the change in the industry and how small our farm was. And I've said it before that I remember in the election somebody saying they wouldn't vote for me because we'd ruined that farm with trees. Um, and we still, you know, farm half of it with beef, but the, the folks at the farm is now seed production. But I have to say that even though there was a kind of resistance to doing that in the first place, the forestry is now our favourite part of the farm. Um, so people should give it a chance. <laughs> um, these legislative changes are important to address the concerns of farmers who have called for greater assistance and less bureaucracy in facilitating tree planting. The policy and regulatory changes that will follow this legislation need to adhere to this principle to enable as many small farms as possible to avail of the schemes. However, this move cannot detract from the need um, to clear the forestry licensing backlogs and the greater afforestation strategy. We need consistency from the government on these issues and I've sought clarification on the 7 uh, million in capital expenditure which is due to be moved from the forestry budget um, and I'm currently working with the community in Riverstick and Cork to prevent um, the sale of a substantial part of a public forest and I appreciate if both the ministers would look into this because I don't know at a time when we're trying to meet our COP26 obligations and all of that why would we would be selling um, public forestry um, you know of, of mixed species like that I just don't know how we square that circle with our commitments um, while the amendments to allow small-scale native tree planting is a positive development we needed to form uh, part of a holistic forestry approach um, and just finally, I'm, I'm not a member, I'm not, unfortunately not a member of the Agriculture Committee, but in speaking to members, um, it seems these two changes being lumped together has come a bit unexpected and last minute and unexplained. So I'd echo their calls uh, for clarity and more information on this and uh, an, an explanation from ministers and their replies would be great. Thank you, Cahirlach. Well, well, you for time with me. Um, it's very much appreciated. And I'd also like to thank the Minister and his officials for arranging to give a brief to the Arachtas Agricultural Committee this morning 
and I suppose, you know, has been said, um, I suppose these amendments came out of the blue to the committee, and um, it was that, that um, briefing this morning um, was, was, was much, very much beneficial um, to the members, and we greatly appreciate it. I suppose, you know, I welcome um, these amendments and uh, these uh, small um, plantations on farms, you know, and the fact that you won't have to go to the rigorous um, procedure of trying to get a, a license um, to plant um, small areas on your farm has to be welcomed. And yes, it has a part to play in, 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 in climate change and reducing our emissions, and will have a very, very important part to play. But I just want to make the point um, to the ministers here today that you know, we have to have a commercial forestry industry. And to keep that uh, commercial forestry industry in place, we need commercial forestry. And we have a target in programme for government of 8,000 um, hectares per annum. And I would um, urgently plead with the ministers to keep that target in place for commercial forestry. And even as it stands, you know, there is the requirement to have a certain amount of um, na na native, native trees in commercial forestry. But without Sister Spruce, we can't have a commercial industry. And you know, we don't want a situation that we have to import timber into this country in large quantities. We want to be able to keep our mills, our mills running here for the production of timber and for our country. We have a, a tremendous ability to grow timber in this country. You know, we can grow Sister Spruce uh, more efficiently than any other country in the world, and we can't lose sight of that. And what it is to keep timber contractors in work or you know, to, keep the, to, keep the, to keep the nurseries running, and you know, to, as obviously to, to, to have a commercial industry. We need to have this 8,000 target for commercial, commercial forestry. And you know, whatever farm and planting is done, and it will be most welcome, and obviously it will help in reducing our emissions and meeting our climate targets. But at the end of the day, these won't be commercial um, ventures. There's no um, um, timber contractor going to come in to cut in 30 or 35 years' time to cut uh, uh, half a hectare of land or you know, a hectare of land. It just won't be commercially viable to cut, to, to cut it commercially. So we just can't lose sight of that, that our forestry industry has great benefits for rural Ireland. It's an employer, it's you know, an indigenous industry that has an awful lot to offer. And we've had a serious shortfall in afforestation over the last number of years, where we're roughly only meeting 25% of our targets in the programme for government. In, you know, in, the, in the Oireachtas Committee, we have focused on this. We've had numerous meetings over the last 12 months, and some of the issues have been ironed out, but still our level of afforestation is exceptionally low. And I don't want a situation where the, the farmer afforestation of small plots of land is, is used to camouflage the, the serious shortfall that we have in, in afforestation for, for, com, for, the, for the commercial use of the forestry industry. This industry, as I said, is a huge employer in rural Ireland, has an awful lot to offer, especially in areas of the country where land quality is, 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 isn't up to the same standard as in other parts of the country. So, Minister, while I welcome these amendments, they have a lot to offer farmer, and to allow farmers to plant small parcels of land without the huge hassle of, of getting licence, that is to be welcomed. But I stress that our target of 8,000 acres for the commercial industry has to be kept intact, and we can't use these figures of farmers of forestation to camouflage that. Thank you. People before profit. So we have Deputy Richard By Barrett and Deputy Paul Murphy. You're sharing seven and a half minutes. Yeah, Thank you. so I'm going to need you around three and a half, is it? Yes, yeah, so three and a half for yourself Paul, and three and a half, yeah. yeah. Okay, Minister, uh, yeah, we will support this amendment insofar as it seeks to uh, <clears throat> facilitate uh, the planting uh, of native forests on small parcels of land and to uh, allow that uh, to happen and allow schemes to be set up to allow that to happen relatively easy. So, yes, we will support it. Um, but there is, as others have expressed, concerns about the way this has been sprung on people and the lack of consultation uh, with uh, stakeholders in, uh, who are concerned with forestry, either in industry or uh, environmentalists or whatever. Uh, I have my sources in forestry and they're usually on to me if there's anything moving and they hadn't heard word, any word of this. Uh, and they're on everything. So. Um, uh, I think that's a problem. 
uh, and there's concerns about it. And as others have said, uh, measures like this uh, cannot be used to camouflage our failures in other areas uh, or to substitute for the necessary action that has to take place in other areas uh, where we are uh, failing. Um, the, uh, the licensing issue and the backlog of, uh, on licenses has been already mentioned uh, as a major concern. Uh, and the fact that we are likely looking at, or very possibly looking at, net deforestation taking place in this country, uh, uh, as suggested by the massive, the greater number of uh, felling licenses being issued uh, compared to a, a fraction of that for afforestation uh, licenses and the EPA uh, signalling a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I brought it up here, uh, where they were signalling that they believed there was a danger of deforestation because felling was happening essentially uh, dictated by market concerns rather than by the best stewardship and guardianship of uh, forestry. And um, Another concern, obviously, I have flagged recently with the threatened sale of the Kilgar Forest in Enniskerry, which I'm glad Quilce uh, backed off on, but it, it posed very serious questions. Uh, and I've put in questions since, trying to understand what on earth ever possessed Quilce to imagine that an amenity forest might be a good idea to sell uh, when we're supposed to be meeting climate and biodiversity. Uh, targets and a similar threat uh, to a forest down in Kinsale and Cork and so on, and indeed that significant sales are going on by Quilce uh, 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 on, uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, and that is linked to the mandate of Quilce, uh, which at one level we're told are trying to re-pivot re uh, towards biodiversity and so on, but in reality uh, are much of what they do is about replanting, clear felling Sitka spruce and then replanting 90 to 95% uh, Sitka spruce, perpetuating a failed, uh, a failed forestry model and not doing much in the way of actual active uh, afforestation. And against that background, the idea that they're selling off amenity forest and that there could be any possible justification for doing that uh, just seems to make absolutely no sense and suggest there's something fundamentally wrong with the mandate uh, of uh, Quilce being operated on a sort of commercial uh, basis. The other thing, obviously, relating to Deputy Cahill's point, I mean, I'd like to think we, we can break from the Sitka Spruce industrial forestry model, but what, if we're going to do that, which I think we have to do for climate and biodiversity reasons and for all sorts of reasons, it also has to be a new forestry model that actually delivers a, a living, a decent living, uh, for, uh, for farmers who are engaged in forestry, uh, which at the moment uh, uh, many feel can only be delivered by the, the Sitka Spruce uh, monocultural uh, model. So we need to break uh, from that, but we need to actually give real supports to farmers uh, to do so. I'll leave it at that. I want to focus in on the underlying issue in this bill, the central issue of the bill itself, i.e. the ban on fur farming. Um, two points I would make in relation to that. Uh, one, that there needs to be a just transition for workers who engaged in these industries that have to be shut down, that we've been, been campaigning for a long time uh, to shut down. And that is not just the issue of redundancy payments, it's also the question of alternative employment, uh, retraining, um, just as we would say in terms of uh, fossil fuel workers who are going to lose their jobs in the context of a uh, just and rapid uh, transition. It's essential uh, there that ordinary workers don't lose out as a result of doing the right thing in terms of animal rights. And the second point I would make is that this is a victory of campaigning. It's a victory, it's a consequence of the campaigning by the National Animal Rights Association, by the ISPCA, statements from Veterinary Ireland and many other campaigning organisations. This came about as a direct consequence of a bill put forward by Solidarity People Before Profit uh, to ban firm farming and that pushed the government together with the campaigning from below outside the doll to move to impact uh, this measure. It shows that we can win when we campaign. So that brings me to the next point, which is that the next emerging issue here in terms of animal rights in this country is going to be the bill which will be moved at second stage in next year to ban hair coursing, uh, to ban this cruel practice um, 
which leads to unnecessary tens of deaths of hares every year, unnecessary injuries, mauling, etc., of hundreds of hares every year, uh, where actually hair course, when hair coursing is uh, taking place, a practice which has no support in the public. 77% of people uh, agree with uh, banning it. And the question is going to be, for the Green Party, are you going to go against your long-term policy of supporting a ban on hair coursing to back up your partners in Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and vote against a ban? To the Labour Party, which likes to talk from time to time about animal rights but still hasn't given a commitment to uh, support it? And to Sinn Féin TDs, who had an AGM, a motion before their last AGM, but that got taken off the agenda to support, to change their party's policy and support a ban on hair coursing. And obviously those who have been watching what happened in the North in relation to the motion on fox hunting will maybe not be feeling very optimistic. Um, the attempt to ride two horses at once, I thought, reached its, its zenith with Deputy Carthy's appearance on the radio, where he attempted to say that they were opposed to a ban on fox hunting because of biodiversity, uh, which makes no sense uh, whatsoever. But I would appeal to um, to campaigners to take heart from what happened uh, yesterday in Stormont in terms of the vote on abortion, that Sinn Féin can come under pressure. So for animal rights campaigners, for members within Sinn Féin who support a ban on hair coursing, to put pressure on the party uh, leadership and to say to them, don't be on the wrong side of history on this issue. Support a ban on hair coursing when it comes before the doll next year. Thank you, Deputy. Next, now, De now we have the regional group. So we have uh, Deputy Verona Murphy, you have four minutes, and Deputy Sean Canning, you have uh, three and a half minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. This bill, as we know, it seeks to ban foreign skin farming of certain animals. And to quote directly from the explanatory memorandum published by the Oireachtas, there is now a broad consensus among veterinary and other scientific experts that certain animals should not be farmed for their fur or skin because of serious animal welfare concerns that cannot be mitigated. There are also increasing serious societal concerns in this regard. Now, first of all, I'm always very concerned about the use of phrases like a broad consensus. History and current events should display very clearly and that the dangers of using broad consensus as a way of justifying decisions. And let me give you an example. We would have been 20 months ago told that th there was a broad consensus not to wear masks. Before a few, uh, but a few weeks later, they were made compulsory. More recently, in fact, only a few weeks ago, there was a broad consensus from NEFIT that antigen testing it wasn't worth a damn. In fact, the term used was snake oil. And now the broad consensus is that they should be mandatory. There was a broad consensus at the start of the vaccination programme that two doses would be enough. And now the so-called broad consensus is that we need at least three and maybe more. So recent events alone should warn us against making law based on notions of such as broad consensus. And I think if we look more carefully at the arguments in favour of supporting this bill, I would be very concerned at some of the stage, some, at some stage in the future where very similar arguments would be used to try and ban or contain, curtail more mainstream farming of animals. We already hear talk about the ridiculous notion that limiting or reducing the total herd in Ireland will somehow make a material impact on climate change. Now we, we see through the withholding of cap payments until, until uh, certain eco-schemes are put in place and that farmers are already being targeted in an unfair manner. The reason, of course, that the fur farming bill will receive government support is partly as a compromise to get the Greens on board in government negotiations, but also because it's an easy and relatively non-controversial way of making a government look compassionate. And there are only three fur farms in Ireland, so it's not going to be a big vote loser for any of the parties in government, but it sets a very concerning precedent. And I welcome the provision of, of a compensation scheme for those affected, because if this 
bill passes, then they're going to need it. But we can't just take away people's livelihoods without ensuring that they are financially compensated. And I'd ask the government to bear in mind with regard to license holding salmon drift net fishers, they might ensure that the same are compensated. But finally, section six of the bill contains a definition of what a specified animal is. It goes on to list a whole host of different animals which this bill will apply to. And however, it further goes on to say that the minister on the day may, by order, designate any animal or class of animal as a specified animal for the purpose of paragraph H of the definition specified animal in subsection. That gives the minister of the day the power to add any animal he or she likes to, this, uh, to be banned without ever having to consult this house again. And that would concern me and for what might be laid be laid, in this, uh, be, laid, be laid before us in the future, and it would effectively give the Minister the power to close down the Irish woollen industry at stroke of a pen. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you very much, Cahir, and uh, I welcome the opportunity to speak here to, uh, this afternoon on this uh, bill. And like my uh, pr the previous speaker from the regional group, I, I do uh, look at this and say, well, what is broad consensus? How do you define it? And what's broad consensus? We could have broad consensus on anything, but do we have the proof that, these, uh, that there is actually a broad consensus? We could take up uh, uh, stances on different things. And I think at the end of the day, what we have to talk about is uh, animal welfare, how animals are being treated, how animals are being protected, and how um, the, the fur farming, for instance, which is the intention of this bill, how that can be done in a way that uh, if people are, if that is going to be closed down, how we're going to transition uh, to uh, the people who make a livelihood from that in a licensed way are actually going to uh, be tr uh, transitioned out of that in a way and are being compensated. I, I do um, have listened to the debate here today and I suppose what I'm going to say now is that this morning we had a debate about pain relief uh, for um, unborn babies and there was an outcry from certain TDs that what we were doing was, was wrong. My God, if we cannot give relief, pain relief to children uh, who are uh, being, uh, um, in a late preg pregnancy, and if people say that we cannot give them relief or we shouldn't interfere in that, uh, and at the same time, the same people want the welfare of animals to be the top priority for them, I think we need to recalibrate our thinking on all of this. I would say that uh, we, but this bill would set uh, a precedent that wouldn't be good. And I'd say, Minister, if you're doing something with this, it needs to be done in a way that it's, it's, it's very exact, it's very precise, and is, is limited in what the powers which will give to a, a minister would be. Um, I also would say that um, when we talk about the, and I come from a rural area, we talk about um, uh, hare coursing or fox hunting or whatever. They've been part and tradition of lots of rural areas for years and have continued uh, to be there as a source of, uh, I suppose, keeping um, wildlife uh, under control, keeping foxes under control and keeping them. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, 80,000 deer, too many in this country, running wild around the place. And what are we going to do about that? They're jumping out on the roads, hitting cars and whatever, and, and that's endangering life. So we need to do something about that. So if we were to put things in an order of priority, I would say there's a hell of a lot of things we need to do first. And I go back to the point I made initially. We were here this morning, we talked about pain relief for the unborn child uh, who has a heartbeat, and people don't want to support that. And yet the same people want to support uh, the protection of animals. I agree that we need to do that, but we need to make sure the priorities are right and that we deal with human beings first. Thank you very much. They may turn up, I don't know. Okay, all right, all right. You have seven and a half minutes anyway. If right. you want to share, that's fine. Th thank, thank you very much, uh, I suppose, ministers, um, I have to say to you that uh, I hear you talking about planting native trees, but you have the forestry industry finished. For a long time, I thought it was a uh, department officials were lagging. For more, more people thought that it was objectors were causing the delay in, in, in felling licences. But now I honestly feel to the government and these ministers that are... Um, 
uh, I have the whole thing finished completely. I honestly be believe, Minister, and I always say what's in my, in my head, I believe that he don't want to cut spruce, or he don't want to replant spruce, or he don't want to plant uh, spruce anywhere. It's totally against their will, and, and I, I, it's against the grain with you. And you see, uh, I have been told, I, I'm not against native trees, but we, we need commercial we need commercial timber as well. And we see that, um, that there's a backlog. The backlog is so much, and uh, we've gone so far behind now with felling licenses that timber has increased to an unacceptable level, and, and, and it is preventing people from building houses. A stick of timber that was, for many years, was 20 euros uh, at 6.3, that's now 38 euros. And it's the same with every other type of commercial timber. It's practically doubled in price, in, 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 prices, and, uh, in price. And it's having a detrimental effect. But I honestly believe uh, that you don't understand the value of spruce. We are told that, that uh, spruce uh, sequesters uh, uh, an acre of spruce sequesters 13 tons of, uh, of, of carbon where uh, a native, native tree is, and they take much longer to grow. Uh, and like I said, I'm not against them, but we have to be real about this. Uh, only sequester four, four tons per, per acre. So uh, I, 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 I haven't made one iota of a difference or, or help to the, to the, the, the ferry license situation. And, I, I, I have no, I have lost faith, and we, we have spoken so much about it, and the, the, we're still where we were, uh, as I see it, and um, people uh, have have walked away from planting trees because they see what's happening to the people that that want to to cut down trees, and 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 in some cases wanted the money for to, for for real things like sending children to college. Are from uh, are to, to, to help uh, do up a house for a, a man that uh, you know uh, got immobilised and he wanted to you know make his house uh, put it in order so that he could manage a wheelchair and he he, he couldn't uh, he couldn't uh, uh, get any money because he couldn't. Uh, or he doesn't have any money because he can't get a felling license, and he can't. Neither can he get permission to to build a road. And I have always uh, said that when you plant a crop, whether it is barley, or oats, or spuds, or whatever it is, there must be an ideology there that you are going to cut it down when it is ripe. And that surely has to be the same way with with um, with forest. And, 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 and the, uh, the, the cutting, of, uh, uh, cutting down of forests. And they would replant them again, but they can't replant them when they can't get a felling license to cut them. So then, in relation to wild animals, and I concur with uh, Deputy Kenny from Galway, it, it, it was sad to hear so, the, some of the comments that was made about us wanting to... Um, uh, to do something about pain relief for little babies, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, who are human beings and, and creatures of God, but not alone did they not want to hear about the, 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 the little babies. They don't want to hear about God either, because many of them think that they are God themselves, and they don't have to worry about nothing. But there they will come to like everybody else. In relation to the wild animals, I say to you, ministers, we are completely overrun with deer in Kerry. Our roads are not safe. I, I used to the other morning, he, he, after going to the trouble of getting his, his driving test and buying a car and getting expensive insurance 
And at a quarter past seven in the morning, a deer ran out in front of me, made flitters of, of his car that he was after giving a lot of money for, and, and he's, he's finished now at this stage. He can't go to work. His car is out of action before he really got going at all. And something has to be done about the dear uh, ministers because they, they, they have our side of the country totally overrun. The roads aren't safe. They have farmers eaten out of house and home. They, they, they put it out. They, 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 the only thing now is tis no, they, we're talking that there'll be no fertilizer next year. It has been no good at all anyway to put it out for many farmers because the deer, the deer had the benefit of it. Then about foxes, there needs to be some, uh, 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 some control taken of the foxes as well because it is absolutely horrible and any we don't, maybe many we don't realize what happens when, when, when a, a lamb is taken or when a couple is taken and the, the devastation that that is for, for, for sheep farmers that, that work hard and, and have to traverse mountains and glens and valleys to see after these sheep and to think that maybe 30 or 40 sheep out of a flock finish up every year without any lamb because of foxes. That's the gospel truth, Minister. I don't know if you understand that, uh, but we're, we're completely overrun and there needs to be some policy or so, something, uh, uh, some government action taken to deal with the deer and, and the foxes and more so the deer because people are being hurt, people are being killed, a mother of three children killed coming into Killarney uh, within a half a mile of the centre of the town. That's the gospel truth. We need to do something about real issues and, 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 and this is your time, your ministers for, for this time. I don't know how for, for how long, but if you want to, to prove your work, you must do something about these issues. Very much, Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice. And you're I'll sharing with Deputy I'll, I'll want to give him uh, two and a half minutes. Um, I'd be fairly brisk, um, Minister. First of all, I think the the largest part of this bill um, was in relation to the cull of the mink. Um, I think we need not forget those people because those people seem to be um, kicked down to the side with these new amendments that has come in. Um, I think fair compensation has to be given to them. They have worked with you in every way. Some of them will tell you very clearly that the department hasn't been um, as helpful to them and working with them as they should be, and proper compensation for those people who have facilitated you in every way um, needs to be done. And then at the bottom of the bill, in sort of what I would call in rural learn the half arsed manner, we have thrown in a few um, uh, amendments about forestry on a bill about mink. I just can't get my head around it, but look at, uh, I suppose this place would baffle you every day. Um, and to be quite frank about it, and call a spade a spade, Minister, um, you are bringing in uh, basically uh, a document or a, or a way forward of taking a box that Ireland will reach its target and that you'll be able to do a press release to say we we'll reach the seven or eight thousand hectares under climate. Um, but to be quite frank about it, we won't have done it the way we should have done. And there's one simple reason, and every deputy on the committee here that's, that, that's on the Agricultural Committee will tell you straight up, we're blue in the face telling you about your department that's dysfunctional, that since 2016 has never reached a target, would you keep persisting with the same piano players and you're going to keep getting the same tune. Um, the bottom line on it is this bill, fine, we'd all support it. I don't think anyone has a problem with it. We've said about this how, how, you, how farmers should be allowed to plant a hectare. But why in Northern Ireland, if you're where Matt Carty is from, why if you cross this invisible line, they can sow three hectares without planning, without licences. But where Matt is from, you, have to, you can't do anything. You have to go through reams of paperwork, wait three years for it. Why today, when the department came in to us, and I would urge you, Minister, if you're coming in to us in the afternoon, later on to our committee, I would urge you to have answers. You are asking us to sign basically a blank checkbook at the moment. Um, you, when we ask today, is there an establishment grant? Oh, well, that will be down the road when we put the thing together. Is there so much a year? Oh, well, that will be down the road when we put the terms and conditions together, when we talk to this people and that people. When you talk to the forestry industry at the moment, they have lost confidence. That's the first thing. 
Why, Minister, or is it the green dream that it's going to be all native woodland? I see pine is within it. Well, now, I won't say it in here what I think of pine, because I've seen pine growing around the country, and I'll tell you one thing, it should never have been sown, in my opinion, because it was the worst timber ever you'd put in. As, like, does, why haven't you done the wording of forestry? And if you want to sow whatever native species, or if you want to sow pine, even though I wouldn't be a great fan of it, or if you want to sow a bit of spruce in a corner. I have seen down the country where farmers, and, and, and a field is generally square, and when you're mowing a field, you go around in a semicircle. They had what we call shelter bells. And there could be different, I often seen spruce in it, they never done a bit of harm. I often seen all native timbers in it, never done a bit of harm. Great idea. But what, if you listen to the to your department today, what they have said that anything I think less than point one won't come up in the carbon counting. But it will come up when you do your dashboard telling every one of us every week, oh well we're great now, we're at 5,000 hectares. The reality of it is in a forest station in this country, at the moment we're cutting six hectares to every one we're planting. Ye have not addressed that issue. The reality of it is that at the moment, there is, I think, something like uh, 45 licenses in the last month and 36 before that. It's a disgrace what has happened to people that want to plant in this country. And what you are doing now is basically saying, oh, well, look, we're great now. We reached the 8,000 hectares. What do we reach it with? We reach it with every Tom, Dick and Harry of an excuse to try and tick the box to cover Ireland down the road. I think, and I've said it time and time again, your department, and yes, in the line of failing, has worked, and that's good. But we have to keep, it's like, it's like a mafia, the way we have to keep bringing in people to try and keep at them the whole time to get results for people out there that are busting their arse trying to get a living out of forestry or trying to get work out of it or trying to keep mills going. And in the line of a forest station, it's not now. It is criminal what's gone on in that department over the last six years, and it's not now. It's the farmers of Ireland under this new climate agreement that's going to be kicked in five, 10, 15 years' time for what we haven't done now. Thank you. Ministers, I appreciate what you're trying to do here, and I welcome the amendments, but it's uh, far short of what we really do need. Uh, and out there, uh, there is a huge crisis within the forestry sector, and the chairman will, will agree with me on this and the other members of the committee. This is the one singular issue uh, that has continuously uh, been discussed at the, forestry at the Agricultural Committee uh, since the start of, the, of, of, of this stall. The one singular issue that has continuously been debated and discussed, and it is always in a crisis mode, and it will continue. And what we really need here is standalone uh, legislation uh, to fix the outstanding issues uh, that are there. You've seen the support uh, from the forestry um, um, bill of, uh, uh, of uh, 2020, and there was absolute support from right around uh, this house here. And you will get the very same support if you bring in standalone legislation to fix the problems uh, that, that, are currently being, uh, that are currently there. When you speak to the, uh, the nursery people, uh, the planters, the, uh, the sawmills, uh, everybody will recognise the problems that are there and the feel that the department are, haven't, uh, are not grabbing the, 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 the real issues and, and sorting, sorting them out. I mean, you look at people building houses at the moment, and I know this is to do with planting, but uh, uh, the, the, the issue of felling as well is a huge problem. There's millions of trees out there to be felled at the moment, and uh, when you see the, 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 the issue of the, the licensing and what is going on. And I, the, the amount of, uh, Minister, I would ask you this, the amount of people who have applications into to plant forestry, and an awful lot of them still have the applications in there, and they're being, going through the process and being assessed, and who will never do it because the sea of the crisis within the forestry sector. And maybe if you looked at the people and, and, and spoke to them, asking the people who I know, um, Senator Paul Daly spoke in the Senate about this today, and that if you actually, and I would agree with him 100%, if you phoned them up and said, are you wanting to go ahead uh, with your, your, your planting application, yes or no? 
and I can assure you that you will be able to deal with people who are really serious, who want to plant, uh, uh, you will get, doors, get, get through those uh, appli applications. I think we could all speak here uh, for the next three or four hours here uh, on, on forestry and the issues uh, that are there, and they are easily um, uh, solved. Okay, but I would plead with you, Minister, and your officials and your department to look at standalone legislation to deal with the real current crisis that is there at the moment. And I can assure you, you will get, you will get around the house uh, support uh, for such legislation that you would introduce. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Kyo. So that concludes our uh, consideration of the health, animal health and welfare miscellaneous provisions bill. Is the motion to instruct the committee agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. We move straight away to item number 14.